Right, welcome back. So this video, we're going to take a look at implementing this into your DAW and how to set it up and route everything correctly. So there's three major ways that you're going to be using this plugin uh, inside of your DAW. Uh, the first one, which we looked at uh, in the first video, is just loading it up as an instrument channel. And I must just say this will be slightly different from DAW to DAW. Ableton, you'll be loading these on a MIDI track. Uh, I'm not sure about some of the other DAW's logic, obviously an instrument track as well. Um, some of the side chaining stuff might be a little bit different as well, but for the most part, they're all fairly similar. So you'll be able to figure that out according to whichever DAW you choose to use this in. Um, so like I was saying initially, to load it up as an instrument track, obviously create instrument track, load, choose your plugin, the Reason Rack, which is what we have here. Uh, this is fairly self-explanatory. I just wanted to discuss the outputs um, I'm just going to delete these modules that we put in here and let's just assign to, we'll just grab the ID8 instrument device, uh, we'll assign one of those and another one. And you'll see if we flip over to the back panel now, it's automatically assigned it to different outputs. Um, by default, these will go to a single Cubase channel. If I just move this over, you'll see the Reason Rack here. So we have those two electric piano and piano assigned. They're coming out of the Reason Rack instrument channel that we have here. Uh, should you want to assign different channels, you can do that. Uh, so if you have just the one assigned, these main ones will all filter into the main output. They'll be summed together. Uh, in Cubase, if you click on this little arrow over here and head down to activate outputs, you'll see you have uh, a number of different stereo pairs that you can enable. Uh, we'll just enable two of those. And if you look down at the bottom of the mixer now, we have additional outputs assigned to uh, the Reason Rack instrument channel. In this case now, if I play back, You'll see we're still just on one channel there, even though we do have the other ones implemented. Uh, we can flick back to uh, the uh, front panel of the I.O. device. And if you just disable this two main uh, button, then what will happen is these will be routed to individual channels. So if we play that back again now, we can solo the second one. So that's pretty much how you would set up individual outputs. Uh, so you can assign multiple different instruments to different outputs that you can have different channels inside of Cubase with different effects on them and then regroup those to a bus if you would like to do it that way. Um, so that pretty much covers it for using it as an instrument. It's fairly self-explanatory. Um, aside from this, everything is automatable, obviously, and uh, you can use it just like you would any other synth. Um, We'll just leave that one alone for now. And I want to take a look at the second method of setting up the Reason Rack, and that's as an effect. So you actually have a separate uh, VST plugin for this called the Reason Rack Plugin Effect. I can load that up as an insert on this drum channel that we have here. Or the drum loop, should I say. So let's just jump into the Reason Rack now again. And I want to just take a look at some routing options here with this. Uh, I'm going to insert the channel dynamics on this drum loop. Let's dial in some settings. There we go. Um, so let's just take a look at what's going on in the back again. Uh, so you can see from our, our device, if we just expand that, we've got audio in from host coming in now. It's been auto patched for us, coming into the compressor and then out going back to the outputs of the, com uh, of the compressor. Uh, in this case, you're not really going to be wanting to set up multiple outputs. Uh, not even sure. Yeah, it won't actually let you um, enable those inside of Cubase. Um, but there's no really real need to do that. Uh, what I do want to look at is the side chaining in this. Uh, so you can set up a side chain like you would in any VST3 plugin. Um, we'll just activate the side chain there. 
click here and then add sidechain input. I'm going to just select this uh, prog kicks channel that I have inserted here. It's just a sampler track with a kick on it. And let's just unmute that. So we have our prog kicks coming in. You can set that to pre-fader if you want to, uh, so that you can turn that one down if you want to use it as a ghost kick channel, for example. Um, now that's all we need to do, but there's one more step that you have to take inside of Reason to set this up correctly. If we flip back to the back panel again, you'll see you have a sidechain input. So whatever you have set up here, it gets routed to this sidechain input here, or the outputs actually, should I say. Uh, all we need to do is then decide where the sidechain needs to go to. In this case, we're going to go to the sidechain input on the compressor. And if we flip back now and click sidechain active, we should have sidechaining on the compression. And there you go, the kick is now sidechained to the compressor correctly. Uh, this is not just for sidechaining compression. Um, there's a number of different things that you can do with this. For instance, if you are using the digital vocoder, for example, you can use these sidechain outputs to send a signal into your vocoder as a carrier um, and use the audio input. So if you want to do use a, let's say, an audio a uh, clip of a synth pad and you want to use that to affect the drum loop that you're on here you'd set up the side chain for the synth pad root that in and then uh, that would affect the uh, vocoder for the because obviously you need two signals a carrier and the modulator uh, so that is how you'd set that up as well also with the side chain so that uh, pretty much covers the essentials of setting up the effects. Obviously, there's a lot more complex routing that you can do with this, but that's the basics. Um, and we're going to get to some more complex stuff later on when we look at the utility modules as well. So the last thing I want to look at, I'm just going to jump back to our initial plugin that we set up here. Just mute this. Uh, is setting up Reason as a MIDI effect uh, or as a player. Uh, the, one of the real highlights with Reason 11 for me is some of the player modules that are available now. So let's just right click, uh, we'll open up this uh, the editor again. Let's come down to the players section. Um, now you can actually add a module from the instruments section here as well. You don't have to use the players. Uh, you could also be using the uh, matrix pattern sequencer or the monophonic appreciator as well to do this uh, if you want to do it that way you can come down to the midi out device drag one of those in and you'll see you have uh, you generally shouldn't need to set anything up unless you want to be routing cv uh, data to midi uh, which you can do if you're using stuff like the lfo for example um, but for the most part just the default settings will be fine and this will basically give you an output of any of the notes that are coming from the generators inside of Reason, uh, which you can then route to other devices. Uh, so to do that, uh, let's just delete that and we'll grab a player. Let's just grab the dual appreggio player and we'll cover these in detail later on in the course. But for now, just to show you how we set this up, we can just grab any sort of random preset. Um, and let's uh, go and insert a instance of Anna 2. Just grab something that's a little bit more suitable for the sound. We'll grab like a polyphonic patch like this. That'll do fine. And now what you want to do is go ahead and check on the MIDI inputs for Anna. Currently, we have all MIDI inputs set up. We're going to click on that, and we're going to select the Reason Rack plugin, Event Out. And that is coming from this MIDI Out device here. So what you want to do now is then just enable the monitor on the Anna instance that we have here. And then we can jump back to the Reason Rack plugin now and play a couple of notes on the keyboard. So now we have the rack actually controlling 
uh, that instance of Anna that we have. So there you have it. Uh, so that works like any sort of MIDI effect in Cubase. Uh, the neat thing with this is um, you can record, let's say for instance, record just a chord to this channel. Let's just jump in there quickly and quantize this stuff. So there we have the chord which is generating the ops from a reason and then sending them to, to Anna. One of the cool things with this is that you can actually print the MIDI notes to the Anna track as well. If you just record enable the Anna track, they will come back to the beginning and hit record in Cubase. You actually have the output of that um, reason rack being recorded inside of Anna now. So once you decide you want to maybe just print that down so that you have a little bit more control over this, uh, you can do so and then go in and edit the generated notes afterwards. I would just suggest that you put in a little bit of pre-roll because it, it does tend to miss the first few notes sometimes. Um, but yeah, that pretty much uh, covers the basics of using the rack as a MIDI effect. Uh, we'll come back to this later on when we look at all the um, players in detail. So that pretty much wraps up the setup and routing. Uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.